I would love more conversations with owners, right? They will never allow you in, but then they'll get frustrated when people form an opinion based on 10% of the information. And guess what? You've only given us 10% of the information. I do think there's a huge bit of learning for football clubs to bring people completely in because you've got nothing to hide. Therefore, tell everyone what's going on. So when you do something like you sack Patrick and you say, um, I had all the information, I think you have a duty to share all that information as long as it's not um, sensitive stuff that's um, like difficult for him in his career going forwards. But if it's stuff that explains the decision better, like come and tell people. And it amazes me how often people have nothing to hide, but they do hide. And then people like me get a phone call from a football club going like, why did you say that on the telly? Because that's not what happened. It's like, well, you're forcing us to guess because... Yeah, I get what you're saying. I think, look, it, it, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Right. So let's just talk about Patrick for a minute. Yeah. So here's a person that I've got a, a unbelievable amounts of time for, right? He's a he's a brilliant guy. He's smart. We had a fantastic season with him. You know, we got to the semi-final of the FA Cup. You know, keeping Palace in the Premier League, finishing 12th is an achievement, right? Let, let's be realistic. We're, we're a bottom nine revenue club in the Premier League. <coughs> Every year somebody does that, it's an achievement. We'd all like to outperform a bit more than that, but he had a really good, fantastic season. If I was to talk to you about, you know, where it lost its way a little bit, I, I might just talk openly and freely. And tomorrow there'll be a headline in the, Daily Mail that says Paris slams Vieira for not blah, right? So that's why people are, are, are cautious about it, right? You know, I want and believe that Patrick can be a fantastic manager. I think that, you know, working for nearly two years at Crystal Palace, keeping us in the division, having a good point study, getting to the semi final FA Cup, pretty strong CV for a Premier League manager when you think about, right, the, the longevity of Premier League managers. And the fact of the matter is, because of the resources at clubs like this, and because of the way things go, sometimes things just lose their way, right? Yeah. You know, and you start trying things and they're not happening and, you know, it just it just loses its way. And of course, the spectre of relegation for a club like this is so great, you know, that on the balance of, you know, me desperately wanting to stick with a person that I like and respect and I want him to be successful and me having the duty of care to this football club and not being able to risk relegation when, you know, we've built this academy, this is brilliant, we're finishing it off, we're just about to start on the main stand, that will take us in the top 10 by revenue clubs and build real longevity. That risk overcomes, you know, the other part of it, right? And and in this instance, it's it's been proved to work out, but we don't know it wouldn't have worked out under Patrick. Of course we don't know. There was, there was a chance of that. There's no question it wasn't. You know, all this, he'd lost the play Nonsense, right? Players had all the time in the world for him, right? Just sometimes in organisms and organisations, things just aren't going right. But I can understand for most people why it's so difficult to speak about that. Because even out of what I've just said, there might be a headline for somebody, right? That they can twist. So, of course, it makes people very circumspect yeah. about, about, about speaking about things. And, and yeah. I understand that. I do get that. I, but I just feel that, like almost everyone that owns a football club does it because they love football or they want that club to be successful and the fans are on the same journey and it just, there feels a disconnect doesn't there at the moment between owner and fan and I think there needs I think there can be a way for everyone to coexist in a, in a more health in a healthier way has it ever been any different though Jay I mean you know the fact of the matter is football is a zero sum game right yeah so there are of the 92 clubs right there are nine in the EFL that can be successful, i.e. get promoted. And there are what, maybe six or seven in the Premier League that can be successful. Every other football fan is either mildly dissatisfied, completely dissatisfied or, you know, and of course it's the one subject um, in the world because we all grew up with it and we all feel passionately about it. We're pretty much everybody, you know, the way I describe it is this. If, if I walk into a restaurant with you, and there are 50 people in the restaurant, 99% of those people would never imagine they could do your job, right? Not one of them would think, you know, they know Jake's a great presenter, he's done F1, he's done all these amazing things, he knows how to do the links, he knows how to manage the people, he knows how to make a programme work on its own. You know, and that's difficult. I don't think I could do that. Could you do Steve? Oh, yeah, definitely. Football chairman, run a club, I know exactly what I would do. So... 
it's a different type of profession. It's 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 the ultimate zero comp sum game. For some to do well, others have to do badly, right? And sometimes, you know, it, it, it's also quite nebulous. You know, it's difficult yourself to put your finger on what's wrong. You know, to go and sit in front of people and and to explain it, and then you make promises, right? And then you look stupid because you make promises. You know, next year we're going to get promoted. Next year we're going to win the league. Look, I'm more circumspect, uh, more open about it. Because I think we've got a really good fan base, you know, that have been through two administrations and understand the downsides that maybe some of the Norwich fans, you know, might not see the other side of it. But I equally understand for other owners why it's difficult to do. Can I take you back to a comment you made when you were talking about Patrick and you said that we started to lose our way a little bit. You've been through enough managerial cycles now where I'm interested, have you spotted early warning signs of when you as a team are starting to lose your way? And if so, what are they? Well, the way you play, even more than results, you know, um, because sometimes you can win games, but you recognise you were lucky, you know, you had a sending off or a result. Obviously results. I go to the training ground, you know, once a week. I don't interfere, you know, I don't live at the training ground, you know, but you can, and and no player will ever, you know, I'll never go and ask, how oh, do you think the manager's, I mean, the moment you're doing that, the manager's gone anyway, right? So, but you can just sense a, a mood, you know, you can get a feeling for the, for the way things are going. Um, you've got to remember that you want the manager to succeed, right? I mean, just about the worst period of being involved in football is that period where you think you're inexorably heading towards having to, you know, have that conversation with the manager. Who wants to do that, right? You know, I mean, when we opened this academy, Alan Pardew was here and Ian Holloway was here and, and, and Sam sadly couldn't come, but got a great relationship, you know, with, with all of the managers afterwards. They know it's a fact of life, but in that moment, it's not pleasant, right? It's a rejection. Nobody wants to be told that, you know, we're going to go in a different direction. Um, so, you know, you're as much looking for reasons not to, you know, you're looking for hope all the time. You're looking for a spark, um, but it's a difficult job. You know, being a Premier League manager is a wearisome, tiring job. And often you can just start to see the fatigue in in, in, in the manager. Um, even at the end of Roy's last tenure, you know, Roy now, he would say, I think, compared to at the end of that four years through COVID, you know, all of that difficult period, us not really signing players um, compared to yeah. how he is now. You know, he's got a completely new lease of life. So there's lots of little signs but I do think it's important to go and watch every game I don't think you can get a sense of it on television so beyond just simply deciding to replace them what other methods would you suggest that you have done that have worked effectively to maybe stave off the threat of the sack or maybe turn things around um look you, you're talking to the manager and you're trying to um help them find the right direction. I think I learned very early on, you know, as a as a football chairman, your words carry tremendous weight. You know, at the end of the day, that football manager knows they need to keep you happy in 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 some ways. So, you know, if you just, you want people to succeed, right? So you're just trying to find ways to mentor them. From an advertising background, I see it very much like working with a creative director, right? I mean, you can't do what they do but you're trying to help them be the best version of them themselves. What I find a lot with managers at the moment is that they study certain managers and they understand how they are and how they act, but they don't understand what they actually do to be able to act and be like that. And I almost think for some managers, we're getting too bogged down with data and and you know, we're forgetting the fact that, that a football team is an organism of a group of people and, and there is emotion and effort involved. Um, and I think that, you know, you need to have the basics of just man management, right? Which are for me, you know, if I've got a group of people, they want to have a purpose, right? So everybody in an organisation needs a purpose. What's my purpose? Monday morning, what are we all working towards? Where do I fit inside that purpose, right? What's my role in making that purpose, collective purpose, better? How do I improve as an individual? Am I improving as, a, yeah. a, a, as an individual? And am I inspired? And, and my big thing about inspiration is inspiration isn't a boring week. 
and then an inspirational speech at the end. Inspiration is every second of every minute of every day. So let me give you a great example. If you go and watch training this afternoon or this morning and you watch Roy and Ray in training, you know, all you'll hear is, go on, there's another ball. Yes, top corner. Brilliant. Do it again. Get around the ball. Stop the cross. Stop the cross. Constantly inspired. As I say to people, look, if you're cold, wet, tired and bored, you're cold, wet, tired and bored. You're not, not cold, wet, tired and bored because you're a millionaire. You're just cold, wet, tired and bored and uninspired, right? So I do think that the basics of, of any uh, form of management, whether it's a football team, whether it's a company, hold true, right? And, and, and to get the best out of a, a group of people, you've got to provide them with those basic ingredients. And then give them some time off. You know, there's become this obsession in football of six days a week and running every week and everybody needs some time off, right? Everyone needs a break. Everyone needs to go to the dentist and take the dog to the vets and, you know, people have got stuff to do in their lives and having a break from your problems is sometimes the best solution to your problems than, than just sitting, you know, sometimes less thinking is better than yeah. just constantly thinking about something. Hey guys, it's Jake here. Listen, before you go, please do me just one favour hit subscribe. It makes such a difference to us. The more subscribers we get, then the bigger the channel becomes, the bigger the channel becomes, the bigger the names we can attract and the more impact we can have for you. So thanks for watching and please subscribe right now.